Oh my God, there are literal chickens here. <laughs> that is so funny. This is what happens when you're recording a podcast in Crete. <laughs> Joe here. Stinkriti. Yasas pedia. Me dos stinkriti. Yati. You know I can't stay away from Greece. Uh, but I had always wanted to come to Crete. I'm barefoot. Living that island dream. Of course, I booked an Airbnb. Kind of in the middle of nowhere. Olive trees. Chickens just came by to say hello. Beautiful garden. And this is my podcasting studio for the day. <laughs> How funny is that? Welcome back to Not Your Average Joe, the podcast that'll make anyone a little less average. I'm your host, Joe Franco, and I'm here in Crete. And if you're watching the visual, you'll see that I'm like local, local Crete. Crete is a Greek island that I've always wanted to go to. And so I came. Also, when you live in the UK, it's very easy or it's easier to go to places for like the week or the weekend. So I'm here for the rest of July and I dig it because I'm an island chick by heart. Uh, and today's episode is gonna be pretty different. I wanted to make kind of like a time capsule for myself of what I learned in my 20s now that I turned 30. And uh, I'm outside, so it's like if people come out and yell at me and I have to change location, that's why. <laughs> Y'all, I never said production was gonna be the highest quality, you know what I'm saying? Anywho, big news on my end, I've been off the grid because I was revamping the joeclub.world website. If you're not a member, I would love for you to join. The tech is sleek and sexy and it's something that I've been working on for a long, long time. So it's finally live. You get 50% off if you're a Not Your Average Joe listener by typing in Not Your Average Joe at checkout. I'll link the info in the show notes. But without further ado, let's get into this episode. Kill the intro, sis. You know she's not your average Joe, not your average Joe. Here are 30 things that I've learned as a 30 year old from my 20s. First things first, high risk, high reward, but the risks should always be calculated. A lot of you are sending me DMs about entrepreneurship and how do you take the leap. And what I have to tell you is when you want to take the leap, you need to build yourself a raft. You can't just dive in <laughs> without carefully calculating all of the variables. And so before I became an entrepreneur, my work was to strategize on all of the opportunities I could get so that when I did take the leap, I wouldn't just be diving in the deep end with no safety net. Whether that's getting a job in a strategic area or signing up as a volunteer in a company that maybe you don't get paid for, but you're going to learn how it works. All of these things are essential if you're coming from a background where you have no safety net and you want to build your own. Number two, success is not based on talent. It's based on consistency and leverage. A not average Joe knows that in order to make something of themselves, the first thing that they need to do is be consistent. If you're not consistent, there is no traction, right? All of the projects that I've ever built, no one gave a crap until I had been doing it for like two to three years with no validation. And that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Joe Club has been alive for two years and I guarantee you that on the fifth year is when something's gonna happen. But because I'm connected to that company, because I believe in what I'm doing, I'm not gonna stop because I'm not doing it for validation. And I think that's the ultimate win. It's like when you can find projects that you're not doing so other people congratulate you, but rather because you can't help but do those things. So don't feel like you need to be extremely talented to build a beautiful life for yourself because I know many talented people who have gone not too far simply because they didn't know how to leverage, they didn't have a vision, and they didn't stay consistent on this path that they, they had to build for themselves. Point number three, nightlife friends rarely turn into daytime friends. In my early 20s, I was naive and I thought that these people would translate into true friends and that's something that you learn in your 20s and that's why it's in this episode. Number four, the word friend should be earned, not given. This is another thing that I've learned recently. There's a reason why older adults have fewer friends and I think it's just because with time life shows you who who's really your friend. And I think there's beauty in the naivete of the early 20s with so many friendships, but the truth is the older we get, they trickle into a smaller and smaller group. I think there's a chicken in the bushes that's making noise. <laughs> 
or maybe a kri kri, which I heard is the, the animal here in Crete. Point number five, FOMO brings your vibration down, the fear of missing out. It will literally reduce your positive vibrations, whereas JOMO, the joy of missing out, will increase your positive vibrations because when you are happy with missing out and spending time alone, you're essentially honoring your spirit by doing whatever it wants. And you're not trying to fit in with people who don't want you there or you're not trying to like throw yourself into a situation that is not good for you. You're just happy and content being alone, being uh, with yourself. Car. <laughs> this is like a great episode minus all of the background noise. I'm so sorry, guys. This is what it is when you're a traveling creator. So anyways, embracing that JOMO will elevate your vibration, not to discount the fact that being a part of a group is very important, but I think being able to be alone is a great exercise, and I mastered that in my 20s. Friendship is easy to see when someone considers your win their win. That's how I really started seeing who friends were. It was when I won, these people did not feel threatened, and instead they celebrated me, they celebrated my wins. They literally looked me in the eye and said, you achieving this feels like I'm achieving this and that's dope and I think not everybody has that selflessness but when you find a person with that selflessness hold on to them because that's a sign that they're likely a true friend point number seven that I learned you have to show people how to love you this goes for friendships relationships even family when hello <laughs> when it comes to people that you love having those awkward conversations will be great for you. And having these awkward moments here on the streets of Crete is what I'm all about. One time I told my brother, I was like, say I love you on the phone. Now he says it first, but he didn't. That's like not how he shows love. Now it is, but before it wasn't. Lesson number eight, of course, you could tell people how to love you and they might still not behave in that way, which you gotta make a choice at that point. You have to either accept that that's not who they are and keep loving them, but always feel a lack or distance yourself. And that's a decision that only you can make because I don't really know your moral compass. But I know for me, all of the times I felt a lack where like I needed someone to show me love in a different way, I would express what I needed. And most of the time they reacted positively and did change or like we met in the middle, like we found a solution so that everyone could win. The wildest podcast right here. I swear, 25 dogs just came out. I'm having a good time, y'all. So let's talk about this relationship, you know, category of lessons. Lesson number nine that I learned is the minute someone goes out of their way to step on your head, that is them showing you that they don't actually respect you as a friend. It's like that selfishness that is very human will come out in times of quote unquote friendship. Switching on to one of the best categories, love. When it comes to love, I have learned that I need to take my little time. In my early 20s, y'all, not even exaggerating, I was the queen of the whirlwind romance. It was great stuff for the books, for movies. I called it all research. I'm sure that I'll fictionalize it at some point in my life because it was good and juicy. The kind of stories where you get picked up by a lover at a foreign airport, you have this three-week relationship. I even coined the term micro-relationships because these weren't hookups. They were actual relationships that are still, some of them, good friends till today. But when it comes to love, now I'm learning that it's not about the whirlwind romance. Yes, that's important. And of course, chemistry and attraction, that's all important but that will fade at some point. And so when it really is somebody you wanna keep in your life as a partner, you need to let time do what it does, which little Joanna didn't ever do, so that you can see if the combination of you and this person is rich enough to have soil for you to actually grow into that love category, which doesn't come often. Cause love I think is bigger than this attraction and this like flaming passion. It's somebody that's gonna take care of you when you're sick. It's somebody that's gonna be there for you even when they don't wanna be there necessarily. I guess what I've learned in my 20s is that love isn't glamorous as I thought it was. And that's, you know, some could argue that that's not a good thing, but I think it is because life isn't always glamorous. I don't know. Food for thought. I'm curious what you guys think. This is a great halfway point to pause. And if you could send a comment on the latest Instagram post on Not Your Average Joe and let me know, what do you think? Do you think true love is this passionate love or something that's a little bit more dull and subdued, but like consistent? Because that's a topic I think none of us are really out here talking about. Hollywood makes us feel like if we're not kissing slowly in the rain that we haven't found our one true love. I don't even know if I believe in one true love. I think I believe in love being possible, but who's really willing? Sorry, now the dog is kicking a bucket who's really willing to stick through the ups and downs and see your ugly sides and still be there regardless. After the break, we get down to dirty. 
I could talk about the money stuff. These dogs are really out of control, y'all. Like, why are you running? There's nothing happening. Point number 11, when you make more money, you will attract mo problems. In the words of Biggie Smalls, he was right. I have a copy of my tax returns from when I was in high school and then college and now out of college, obviously. And every year I've made more money, but my personality, my wants, my needs, none of that's actually changed. So I think I've been able to control my desires. A lot of people, when they make more money, they get more expensive taste and that didn't really happen to me. I do buy nicer clothes, as in I buy clothes that are from expensive stores but you know i'm still shopping at the clearance section <laughs> because the 12th lesson is that you gotta act broke to stay rich when i was growing up i would always joke that it takes a penny to become a millionaire and i still stand by that like just because you have the money to spend doesn't mean you should and the more money that you pile on and save for yourself the more freedom you'll have to, to choose the life that you want to live or to choose to spend time with the people that you want to spend time with i think if anything financial independence is like the number one key to a successful life because that's the root of so many people's unhappy People stay in bad jobs. Why? Because they need the money. People stay in bad relationships sometimes. Why? Because they need that financial support. And when you grow your independence financially, you're able to do what you want. And that's beautiful because I think life should be yours to live and not for your checkbook. But that means mastering your desires and curbing your habits and sometimes depriving yourself of those little tiny joys that convince you they're good for you in the moment. But when you look at how many Starbucks you had at the end of the month and you realize that that could have been investments for your future you realize quickly like damn I'm just hurting myself on the subject of finances lesson number 13 is exactly that that being financially independent first comes with being financially aware and not avoiding your debt or your lack of income and removing shame from your financial situation which is an exercise finances it's not this transactional thing it doesn't happen overnight this is a culmination of habits bad or good that determine your financial well-being so think about that like that's something I've learned that I look at money the same way that I look at learning languages or working out. This is a relationship that you have to build over time with habits and, and that's not always easy because that comes with discipline. But I think about my future self and how she would want me to have made better choices and I think that's what I keep in the back of my mind when contemplating making like a dumb financial decision or just like risking tons of my money on investments that I don't think will return. I definitely think in the investment mindset both of my time and of my money if I'm paying to go to a school I think about what that money is going to offer me the opportunity to build be it skills relationships creative juices to live in a new place like that's what I think about when it comes to everything what am I paying for really like what is the potential return of this investment with time same thing if I'm spending time with certain people what what are these relationships nurturing for me or what are they teaching me about myself and if there isn't much ROI then that's your answer like that's not a positive thing for you call me a little straightforward y'all but if the ROI is low I don't know if I can back it lesson number 14 on a monthly basis, it's critical to get into the habit of taking note of where your money is, where it's coming from, and where it's going so you can see your habits. This woman is watering her plants and looking at me and it reminds me of my grandma and it makes me miss home. I think that's why I love Greece so much. It reminds me of Brazil. Lesson number 15. Sometimes the smallest of sacrifices result in the biggest life changes. And sometimes the key is reframing sacrifice into smart investments for your future self. We have the power to reframe everything and anything. And I think reframing in a positive way is something I, I've gotten into the exercise of doing. It's not easy, y'all. It's not easy. Because when things happen, you're like, why is this happening to me? But yeah, you can reframe and, and overall live a happier life. And plus, lesson number 16 is that the cheapest or free things in life are the ones that we always remember. Coffees with friends, board games with family, all of those shared moments, those can most likely be free. It's because we're primitively tribal creatures and fancy cars will likely not scratch those neural networks that are wired into our brains. It'll be a quick hit of dopamine, but it's not going to be long lasting, nutritious joy. So you can sacrifice certain things like that $5 coffee every morning, but you shouldn't be sacrificing that free time that you could spend with your family and friends that you know will enrich your life. Which brings me to point 17. As an entrepreneur that gets to travel the world on a whim, yes, it's a great honor and privilege, but it was very easy to see in my early 20s that freedom is not exactly what you would consider it if you're not sharing it with others. There are reports and like scientific evidence that talk about how happiness is really just a culmination of time spent in tribal settings. So countries that make holidays mandatory for certain times in the year, so 
everybody goes on holiday, those countries are actually happier because what what that means is that everyone has to take that time off. So when you're taking that time off together and you're making those relationships stronger and having memories with those people, that's when you're really happy as opposed to a digital nomad who has all the freedom in the world but is usually alone in that freedom. It can feel like a prison. Now going into my 30s, I'm aware that there needs to be a balance of like freedom entrepreneurially and travel and also commitment to friends and family because if I'm only on one end of the spectrum, I won't be happy. Same thing goes for like the reason I'm moving to London because yes, I had all of the relationships and the nourishing, you know, soul filling activities that I had at home, but I was losing myself because I wasn't being entrepreneurial. I wasn't being young and energetic and I wasn't around creatives. So now I'm doing this flexible lifestyle where it's like a little bit of city, a little bit of family, bringing me to point 18. Whenever you decide that you want to strive for something, it will likely come at a cost. Me being in London means that I get my 30 somethings independence. I get to be an entrepreneur. I get to grow my skills. I'm investing in myself. But it also means that I am sacrificing those weekends with my niece and nephews and I'm missing out on deep conversations with my mom. And that took me a while to learn, right? Like every opportunity that you take will come with a cost and you have to know what's worth it to you because sometimes those those costs hit you in the back of the head and you're shocked. But now knowing this, I know that everything I decide will come with a cost. And it's like, am I willing to pay that cost? How can I make the cost less and if I can I will point 19 we will always have room for new friends but just like with love time will show you people's true colors lesson number 20 I said this one in the episode about solo travel you haven't actually met some of your favorite people yet the people that will change your life and when I started living my life with this behavior I attracted all kinds of beautiful people into my space and that's amazing and what I learned is like there is no limit to how much you can have in your life but you do have a hierarchy you know like the real ones will have the real ones spots and in time you'll see who deserves that real one space bringing me to lesson number 21 with these dogs barking in the background there was action involved too it wasn't like these beautiful people popped up into my life i had to sign up for writing workshops say yes to all kinds of unpaid opportunities be available without knowing if there would be a return on investment because i knew that there would be a a return on investment I'm gonna keep it moving, y'all. I got an episode to record. Lesson number 22 that I learned in my mid-20s was that every single one of us is creative. Creativity is not just something reserved for an elite artsy type, and that's something I thought about. Like, that's how I framed it in my early 20s. I used to put myself in this business or administrative box, but that's bullshit, because to be honest, even people who are business types have to be creative. Our brains are created to be creative. They're factories for ideas and imagination. We tell stories in our sleep. We literally tell stories in our sleep and I think limiting or like depriving yourself from that creative role is an injustice to what you're capable of and lesson number 23 listen to that little voice inside of your head that wants to doodle that wants to write that wants to make music even if it has nothing to do with your day job because we're primitively wired to be creative and just like food and water we need that outlet because it's good for us it's good for our spirits you don't need to be good you just need to create lesson number 24 just because you're one thing does not mean that you can't be another I'm a living breathing in between her i'm in between ethnicities nationalities countries time zones friendships relationships and i'm always going to be in the middle but in my early 20s i thought i couldn't be a businesswoman with curly hair i thought i couldn't be a businesswoman while being a creative i had all of these limitations which ended up preventing me from diving into ideas that took me years to manifest this podcast is an example lesson number 25 a life lived with purpose is a life well lived and usually that purpose will grow with you if it's bigger than you for instance when you're thinking of others instead of your selfish desires that's when the magic really starts cooking 26 being off screens will be the essential medicine to our generation lesson number 27 as well as being indistractable holding your priorities so high because if you're not honoring them and you're giving other people your time then you'll eventually feel depleted and that's not a long-term win lesson number 28 the time that you spend doing things is eventually what and who you'll become so choose your projects wisely lesson number 29 in the end what we all want is to have tight social Social circles filled with trust, love, and care, and we want to live eternally. We want to leave our seeds, whether that's through a child, through art, through businesses, because we all want to know that our time here on earth wasn't poorly spent. Call it ego, but that's being human. And lesson number 30, in the end, what we all want is meaning. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have an above average week. If you would like to join Joe Club, don't forget, use coupon code not your average Joe at checkout for 50% off your first month. I can't wait to keep building it. I can't wait to keep growing. 
growing this podcast and uh, follow me on social for updates from my Crete journey uh, this episode was produced and edited by me background noise by the dogs and chickens and people of Crete see you soon hey yo come listen to my girl man what you doing shit <laughs>